you know, they were, somebody asked me, when was the last time the Dolphins were 3-0 and as if it were the 1980s? It was 2018, and they finished 7-9. and So uh, I, I don't want to throw a wet blanket on all this. Jesus, but, that but is a giant to, You had them blanket. go to the Super giant, Bowl. You're I mean, saying they're the Carolina Panthers <laughs> last year that started 3-0. Well, they, well, they could be. They beat a playoff team week one. They beat a team that would have made the playoffs if Lamar Jackson never got hurt in a huge emotional comeback victory. And they beat the reigning Super Bowl favorite. This is a lot different than I imagine if you it go is. back and analyze the 3-0 from 2018. Yeah. These are and really And they have a very wins. easy schedule coming up after Cincinnati. Yeah. The schedule Cincinnati, gets really Cincinnati easy. Cincinnati is tough. That was yes. a big emotional win on Sunday. It's a short week. Uh, Joe Burrow historically plays man defenses. The, the Dolphins play man more than anybody else in the league. They do cover zero a lot. And historically, Burrow really only struggles against cover two. So... I think this is a good spot for Cincinnati, and if they drop that game, that's all right. You'll take a yeah. prime time one. game at the yes. AFC minute, champion though. that needs a win is not a bad result. I gotta, I gotta tell you guys though, because Mike is now diving deep here on uh, f- looking for things like what he just said to you when he bets the prop over on Joe Burrow going into the weekend because they're zero and two, and even if people think the offensive line isn't going to hold up, he thinks that Burrow always. He he got bad matchups the first two weeks with his offensive line, and he had a good one with the Jets, and now he has another good one. But Mike has been loudly— Well, the Dolphins have a good defensive line. Yes, but the, 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 Dolphins, just, the Dolphins really impressed me with how much— they were daring those receivers and Josh Allen to beat them man. They blitz a lot. They're very aggressive, and it, it's, it's kind of— uh, they, they kept the continuity from the Brian Flores defensive scheme, and it's been paying off so far. A lot of people thought that they might be exposed. I do think that Joe Burrow struggles against zone. A lot of teams play cover, too. That's not really Miami's identity. Maybe they'll show it against Joe Burrow sometimes because they watch the tape, but this is a really good matchup for the Joe Burrow. The point that I was making is that Mike has been all in on McDaniel. He hit all three of the first games. He's betting uh, big offense. He's betting uh, the correct way on Dolphins for three games now because he believes in I mean, McDaniel. And Dan, now, Dan, I've been wrong about the Dolphins. I said that they would make the playoffs. I thought that they would be 3-0, and but the way that they've made it to 3-0 and is not at all at how I expected it to be. I thought they'd get the running game going. Yeah. The way that they've won, they gave the Buffalo Bills 90 plays. Please. I think that's a sign of a really good team. 73 dropbacks for Josh Allen. A, a are you ready to join me and Greg? Is that what you're doing? You what? had them making the playoffs. So you, are oh, you? Oh, I think, I, I still think Buffalo wins this conference, but Miami might find itself a win in the division, hosting a playoff game. Miami is a very good team. They're, it is a sign of a very good team. To win in ways that you do not expect. To find ways to pull victories out when not everything is clicking just yet. you got to imagine the Miami Dolphins are going to be a better team as the season progresses so along they stay healthy. And and to your point, Mike, uh, McDaniel is a run game guru, and the running game is really the, the, the thing that isn't clicking yet. So when that happens, it's going to make the pass offense all the better. The Dolphins, in the latest odds I saw, were 16-1 to to win the Super Bowl now, and, and that's like sixth or seventh of all teams. Whose computer is going off in there? Right that was now? Dan. I saw the yeah. Mad Hatter yeah, panic mm-hmm. over that. What was what was that noise? Yeah. No, I thought it was. Why are you th- wearing a costume today? I thought we were supposed to coordinate the Johnny Depp things. Is this against the bylaws, Billy? Uh, doesn't count. All right. The count. Johnny <laughs> Depp thing was, yeah. it was supposed to be a Johnny Depp pageant where all the Johnny Depps were yeah. Johnny Depp, and then they competed, and then the winner well, got okay, a, a but punishment you guys don't removed. Do, the, you, the, the biggest this joke in count. here is that I'm the one always dressing up on these yeah. things, and well, nobody's well, you're the only one going rogue. The Save the Depps. costume, yeah. Were you about to blame the computer on me? It, it, it seemed it like you were going my, there. My, yeah. But no, my computer yeah. isn't on. So, like, I that's why I was looking at you. Let's go to the tape. There was only one person that sprang into action trying to turn down volume. Volume. Yeah, it was yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was. You guys are blaming me, but it was not me. That it whole was. computer not being on. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing with this Dolphins team is, and you can call it random. They did it last year, and they've done it in these first three games. They they create turnovers. I don't know if it's something. It's random. I don't know what to make of that, but it seems in big spots. They last year they did it, and this year they this team creates turnovers. Let me, let me ask you guys this as a serious question: as you get enthusiastic about the Dolphins, because I think the most encouraging thing is we talk about uh, Tyreek Hill and you lament running game. I'm amazed that that game has three of their guys up front. 
with clean records on pass pressures. Three guys on their offensive line. They, they allowed five pressures, one sack to a very good defensive line that may have been tired at the end of the game. And 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 you'd understand, but our, uh, that the Dolphin offense was on the field for only 20 minutes, and in those 20 minutes, they kept to a clean. That's something I couldn't have imagined from last year when I couldn't evaluate him at all because I was getting the worst pass blocking ever recorded according to Pro Football Focus. I, I do think that the offensive line will get more and more online as the season progresses. It, it's very encouraging that they're sustaining injuries and surviving them during the course of the game. But for me, Sunday was all about the defense. When you give that oh offense God. that many chances, and honestly, Xavier Howard is a player that's going to have his jersey retired by the Miami Dolphins, and Javon Holland is a monster. The personnel that they have in that secondary is dictating that they can send – these massive blitz packages over at quarterbacks. It's how they beat Lamar Jackson last year. They've stayed married to that system, and they're putting these very talented DBs on an island. And Javon Holland is a pro bowler. That yeah. guy is a monster. They nail Their that draft pick. secondary is elite. They, yeah. they, they have such an – I am so impressed by that secondary because they leave them – alone, isolated against some very good, talented receivers. Sometimes it'll burn them like they gave up some big plays against Baltimore. That's what happens when you're leaving guys on that island in man. But for the most part, these guys are answering the bell every time and making big plays. And, and they're still missing a cornerback, starting cornerback in Byron Jones. You know who's really blossomed is Christian Wilkins. He's become really very good. good. And yeah. Melvin Ingram has been a beast. What a signing. signing. Yeah, no, Ogba, like they, they made some really good signings along that defense, and they have a very aggressive style of play. We'll see how that works out against Joe Burrow, who kind of takes advantage of that. That's all right. There's some football's about matchups, and that may not be a great one, but it's still a very encouraging sign. But they, they line up sometimes seven players along the defensive line. Sometimes they drop into coverage, but it really seems like the whole design of the defense is over the course of three plays, we're going to force you into one negative one. Because actually on a play-to-play -play basis, the reason why Buffalo had the ball for so long is because the Dolphins are actually not really good at st stopping you from getting four to five yards. What they are good is sacking you for negative eight, turning the ball over, and they're sort of designing a defense around, at some point, as, as you're driving down the field, we're going to create a negative play or a turnover that's going to stop your drive. You're probably going to get some first downs, but you're probably not going to score. I love philosophically that they're playing defense the way that they play offense, and when it matches up against Lamar Jackson, oh, holy shit, he's more athletic than all of that. <laughs> and also uh, Duvernay as well. He took a quick slant in, in that vast amount of space in behind the linebackers and just ran 80 no, yards. And everyone's yelling, everybody. come on, Davian Howard, you've lost a step. Here, here's why I'm so high on, on Mike Who McDaniel. Who was that? Uh, enter, entering the season, I was just high on Mike McDaniel because he was a part of the Kyle Shanahan offensive scheme, and I, I think the world of Kyle Shanahan, but he's already showing you the signs of a good coach. He's not trying to make – he's not trying to force the run game to happen. He understands that he has skill guys on the outside. He's not married to a system. When he came here first, he looked at the defense, realized, hey, let's keep some continuity. Hold over from the previous staff, and Josh Boyer is a defensive coordinator. I think these are signs of a very smart, good head coach that takes a look at the personnel he has and finds a way to make those players and those coaches be in the best position to win and not force them into a system because he doesn't have this huge ego. But it sounds like you're betting against the Dolphins this we'll be. week. It's a tough it's spot. It's a good spot for the Bengals. Uh, it, it's, it a, it's, it's a tough I don't know spot. about that. I don't know about that. The, the, the Bengals, based on what I've seen of their offensive line, they cannot keep anywhere near – a clean pocket against Miami. Greg, it, did you see what the Bills and Dolphins were doing on that field on Sunday? They have to, they have to play just, four all, days all, later? All, all, it's yeah. Mike's, crazy. all Mike's doing there is betting on football being football yes. on Thursday. The Dolphins shouldn't start 4-0. They don't look like the kind of team that's going to overwhelm and swamp the AFC, even with their next eight games being games that are all against bad quarterbacks after this one, or mediocre quarterbacks. The, the spread is 3.5. Bengals are favored on DraftKings. Short week. Big Dolphin win. I think there's a really great uh, matchup for the wide receivers on the outside and Joe Burrow in particular. You have injury questions about Tua. We don't know what kind of shape he is. Uh, Mike McDaniel said that he's also dealing with an ankle, so he's got his back, his head, and his ankle. Right. Xavier going right is, now. is also a little banged up. Yeah, this is a it's a tough spot. If they win this game, I'm going to be joining you guys in the party, and it, it won't be bit like that. That is as impressive. Oh no, of Billy a win doesn't this think you're welcome at that point. No, the deadline was last Tuesday. Exactly. Sorry. They're going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, that yep. was the deadline. No, yeah, you can't. It was a firm deadline. I, 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 you're I too, well, you and me are two out. You can't be two in after this no, Bengals game I'm if sorry. they start four. No, I was that's why there's deadlines. Billy, I was, 
Billy, you want to extend it to this Wednesday? Thursday, perhaps, maybe? Wednesday. You have to say it before the game, before, before the Bengals game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I'll still have faith in the team if they lose to Cincinnati. No, I'm not going like to be devastated yeah, yeah, you can't do about that, their though, chances. No. Right. That's not the way it works. You're yeah. hedging your bets. Well, my faith don't cut it. What yeah, until Thursday. No. One of, f- one of your? One of <laughs> Continue. One of my favorite things, it's not even that important after I tried four times. <laughs> one of my favorite things Mike McDaniel does is he gives everybody the game ball. Have you seen this when they show the post game yeah. locker room? Uh, you know, he's no, not Whittingham like thinks he, it's lame. He's not like you know two of us. Lame. This not everyone yours. gets a game ball. You know what? Come I'm on. kind of with Witty. No. Settle on one no. guy. Come on, he's like, on McDaniel. Yeah. He's, like yeah. Yeah. he's like the Oprah. He's like the Oprah game balls. You get a game ball. Come on, McDaniel. <laughs> Come on, McDaniel. Quit being a coward. It cheapens the game ball. It's like giving the office secretary a Super Bowl ring. I'm sorry. You can't give everybody a game ball. Coward coach. Also, you got to, I don't think we use that terminology, and everybody in that front office deserves a a Super Bowl ring if your team makes it there. Everybody's playing the same role. The Cyclones gave Greg a game ball on Friday. Really? Mm -hmm. How about that? Did not. Well, you seem to inspire them. Game Pelota. I mean, it would have been nice if they did, quite frankly. Mm -hmm.